1224, Francis received the stigmata during the apparition of a seraphic angel in a religious ecstasy. So basically, Pope Francis decided to go after a man named Francis of Assisi who used to do religious ecstasy. If anybody knows anything about ecstasy, we know it's an evil thing. Hello friends, welcome back to another video. Welcome back, this is the Open Bear TV. Today, we got something important to talk about. G7 Summit. Let's see what the Pope had to do this time. So, let's see. We're gonna get straight into it right now. It says that <clears throat> Vatican News, Pope to G7 on inclusion in disability, however different we are, all the same. Let's read. Pope Francis urges global leaders at the G7 on inclusion and disability to prioritize the dignity, inclusion, and empowerment of persons with disabilities em emphasizing justice, universal accessibility, and sol solidarity. Well, we're not going to read the whole thing, but we're going to do some key points. So, Pope Francis says this. Uh, Addressing the summit today, addressing it basically on October 17. What did he say? He said he expressed deep gratitude for their commitment to building a more just and inclusive world. The audience took place after a three day summit in Italy's central Umbria region that concluded, that concluded on Wednesday with the signing of the Sofagnano Charter. Now, let's go back. Let's go here. The, these principles, the Pope said, not only resonates deeply with the Church's vision of human dignity, but also critical to shape a society that values every individual as part of the universal human family. Basically what he's saying is, everything that we are talking about in this video or in this thing is about the Catholic Church. If you hear anything about universal church, universal human family, it means Catholicism. But, let's get back to it. Um, and it says, once talking about people with disabilities, someone said to me, be careful because all of us are um, have some, which is true. We have disabilities, you know, some of us have the sexual disabilities, the mental disabilities, the physical disabilities. We have some, but let's keep on going because he has some important point to actually talk about. So, let's keep on going. A global priority. That's number one. Pope Francis urged the inter international community to prioritize the international community to prioritize the inclusion of people with disabilities, reminding them of all those present that their equal dignity must be universally acknowledged. Creating an inclusive world, he noted, requires not only adapting structures, but also changing minds. So basically his whole idea, his whole talking point is change the next, the next generation's mind. Because they need to think like us, they have to think like Catholics. You may not see it that way, but this is basically what the gist of it. It has to be a universal thinking, the same mindset. Let's go on going. Basically, um, before calling for universal accessibility, ensuring that all physical, social, cultural, and religious barriers are removed so that individuals can develop their talent and contribute to the common good. 
regardless of the stage of life. If you know anything about the common good, it's basically what we call the Laudato Si, which enforces in his mind everyone should worship on the first day of the week, Sunday. They want to make the Sunday the national or universal day of worship, disregarding God's holy Sabbath. This is why everything he's talking about has to do with Catholicism, which is let everyone have the same mindset for the so-called common good. If you know, you know. Number two, for justice. So he went on to stress that providing services and facilities for people with disabilities is not just an act of social assistance, but a matter of justice. Um, okay. All nations, he said, bear the responsibility to create inclusive communities that promote the integral development of every person. He, re he reiterated the value importance of offering opportunities for dignified employment and participation in cultural and sporting events, warning that in excluding someone from these areas is a grave form of discrimination. I agree with that. People should have access to everywhere, whether they are physically or not physically disabled, because we are all disabled in some way. Technology as a tool. He also highlighted the role of technology in advancing inclusion, stressing that it should be made accessible to all, which is true. But he keeps talking about that same thing. Technology um, must be used wisely to bridge inequalities rather than deepen them. And also that technology must be directed towards the common good. And that means if you are using the technology not according to what his standards are, you are not using it the wrong way. For instance, if I were to say at some point in the future, whenever everybody come get along with that common good nonsense or lie or um, or the common good um, How do you say when somebody is lying to you? Uh, the word escaped me. You got the point. Um, if I'm using the technology to call out the wickedness of the papacy, then in that case, according to the common good, I am not using it the proper way because you cannot talk wrong about the church or meaning the universal church or catholicism that way time of crisis well finally okay finally he talked about humanitarian crisis that affect the most vulnerable disproportionate, disproportionately okay which is those including those with disabilities but then he goes to say finally says reflecting on the spirit of francis of assisi because to me he's not a saint pope francis encouraged the g7 participants to continue their work with a sense of hope and commitment Together, he concluded, we can build a world in which the dignity of each person is fully recognized and respected. So, what are we talking about right now? The first question is, do you anybody know who Francis of Assisi actually is? I'm glad you asked. Let's talk about French of Assisi for a moment. Who is he? Well, you know, let me make it bigger for you guys. A bit bigger so you guys can see. There we go. Giovanni di, Pietrio, di Pietro di Bernardoni. 
the Bernard Dolly. Okay. Known as Francis of Assisi. Was an Italian, uh oh, Italian mystic, poet, and Catholic friar who founded the religious order of the Franciscans. Inspired to lead a Christian life of poverty, he became a beggar and ignorant preacher. Let me tell you, Jesus Christ never asked anyone to become a beggar to live a holy life. What Jesus Christ asked anyone to do is whatever you have, to use it for the service of God, primarily. You don't have to sow or to give up all your wealth and your possession and become a beggar to be a Christian. That's the false Christian teaching. But let's move on. One of the most venerated figures in Christianity no, that's in Catholicism, not in Christianity, because he's not rare, he's not venerated in many other denominations. He only in Catholicism that he is. Francis was canonized by Francis was canonized by Pope Gregory the Ninth on 16 July 20, 2020, 12, 28. He is commonly portrayed wearing a brown habit with a rope tied around his waist, right? Featuring three knots symbolizing the three Franciscan vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. Okay? In 1219, he went to Egypt in an attempt to convert the Sultan al Kamil and put an end to the conflict of the Fifth Crusade. In 1223, he arranged for the first live nativity scene as part of the annual Christmas celebration in Gratio. And today, so called many Protestants, including Seven the Alvinist, or following that same Catholic Catholicism ritual or pagan ritual with a little sprinkle of Jesus lyrics on it, is still pagan. Let's keep on moving. According to Christian tradition, no, according to Catholicism tradition, in 1224, Francis received the stigmata during the apparition of a seraphic angel in a religious ecstasy. So, basically, Pope Francis decided to go after a man named Francis of Assisi, who used to do religious ecstasy. If anybody knows anything about ecstasy, we know it's a evil thing. I should be right. Let me look up that word ecstasy. I'm gonna click on it right now. What do we know about religious ecstasy? Huh? What is religious ecstasy? Well, it's a type of altered state of consciousness characterized by greatly reduced external awareness and reportedly expanded interior mental and spiritual awareness frequently accompanied by vision and emotional euphoria. What is euphoria? I do not know. But euphoria is the uh -oh, oh, experience of pleasure or excitement of intense feeling of well-being and happiness. That's what they say. It's also a symptom of neurological or neuropsychiatric disorders such as mania. People, listen up. Pope Francis is, does he actually do religious ecstasy? I believe so. I believe so. Unless he doesn't know any better. But I believe so. Why do you believe so? Because you have to be a maniac, in my opinion, to say that in order for things to go better, people have to disregard their religious differences and worship all together 
at the same time because of the common good. And if you dare have a difference of opinion, you are the wrong or you shouldn't be. You're all wrong for that. Basically, our freedom of religion would be taken away if the whole world decides to agree with that so-called common good. Common good. But, guys, let me watch you guys think about that. Why would he take a name after somebody who used to do religious ecstasy? I don't know. But let me know what you think about that in the comment section down below. I hope to see you guys again. This was the Open Veil TV. Until then. Bye for now.